Topping today's news, police questioning a male in connection with the death of 12-year-old Adriel Moxie found near her home on Wednesday evening. The Minister of National Security weighing in on the recent survey on illegal weapons recovered in the Bahamas and the commissioner at the prison reveals what may be fueling much of the criminal mindset in the country. <laughs> I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Many Bahamians continue to mourn. Some are in shock, others angry. After the brutal killing of 12-year-old Adriel Moxie, whose body was found through a track road off Faith Avenue Wednesday evening, Police Commissioner Clayton Fernandez spoke at the scene of the crime and explained that they discovered the body using several drones along with police canine units. Again, the discovery has generated anger and fear throughout the country with the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Philip Davis, and the Minister of Education, Glennis Hannah Martin, issuing statements. Mrs. Hannah Martin calling it an outrage of the worst kind. The Prime Minister vowing to turn the country upside down to find the killer. Well, police held a press conference this afternoon where they informed the media that they have a 32-year-old male in custody for questioning in connection with Adriel's murder. I also wish to inform at this time that in relation to the matter concerning Adriel Mox, I wish to inform that um, we have taken a person of interest into custody based on investigations, based on the assistance of members of the community, based on technology that has always assisted us with our investigations. We have taken a 32-year-old male into custody. He is a person of interest, and so our lives, our investigations continue, and as we continue to speak with this individual, I will be able to update you accordingly. He wasn't taken into custody shortly before 10 o'clock this morning in the Faith Gardens, in the Faith Gardens, Carmichael, Cowpen Road area. And so I want to applaud the Bahamian people who have stepped up and rallied together and who provided us with the information. It's a step in the right direction. We're hoping that it yields some positive results, but if not, we want to continue to ask members of the public. If you see something or you hear something, say something to us in law enforcement. Detectives say they made the arrest after a community effort combined with surveillance video and other technology. Police were to officially identify Adriel's body today. They are waiting on an autopsy to determine the exact cause of death. Meanwhile, according to JCN's records, this is the 110th homicide this year, which equals last year's total. Meantime, sighs of relief for two other families. Police say 16-year-old Kay Vano Farrington of Coconut Grove, who was reported missing since November 7th, was found alive and well. And 10-year-old Evan Alisma of Carmichael Road, who was reported missing since Wednesday when he was last seen at the Gerald Cash Primary School, also found alive and well when he showed up. Police say he showed up at school this morning looking healthy. Investigations, though, are ongoing into that particular matter. Minister of National Security Wayne Monroe gave his feedback in reference to the findings by the United States Government Accountability Office that showed 85% of firearms, illegal firearms, recovered in the Bahamas between 2018 and 2022 had been manufactured in the United States and sold by American retail companies. Monroe had this to say when asked if he found that data to be accurate. Uh, the report says that at least 85%. Um, the the fact of where uh, the weapons found illegally here originated have been known for some time and that is why in the police headquarters now you have the anti-gang and firearms unit that contains members from every one of the armed forces from the defense force, police force, customs, immigration and it also contains a homeland security investigation officer from the U.S an officer from the alcohol, tobacco and firearm agencies from the U.S. and they work collaboratively in tracing firearms that are found here. 
In addition to this, Monroe also highlighted recent developments in the government's efforts to work alongside the United States officials and limit the trafficking of illegal firearms to the country. Um, the police would have indicated previously, for instance, that a firearm was recovered from the streets here that was traced to having been bought in the U.S. less than 72 hours before it was recovered on the streets here. And so it's a problem that we're collaborating with the U.S. to address. You would also be aware that there was an American of Bahamian origin that was charged with arms trafficking in the U.S. based on the efforts of that unit and the American agencies. Minister Monroe emphasized that the government will continue to collaborate with U.S. officials and other local agencies to create innovative ways to prevent weapons from entering our country illegally. The Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, is also weighing in on the recent downtown shooting caught on CCTV camera on Sunday night in the area of Junkanoo Beach. He is calling on Bahamians to think before you act. When asked why he thinks criminals have become so fearless or brazen in their pursuit, he had this to say. Uh, the report says that at least 85 percent. Um, the fact of where uh, the weapons found illegally here originated have been known for some time. And um, that is why in the police headquarters now you have the anti-gang and firearms unit that contains members from every one of the armed forces, from the Defense Force, Police Force, Customs, Immigration, and it also contains a Homeland Security Investigation Officer from the U.S., an officer from the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm Agencies from the U.S., and they work collaboratively in tracing firearms that are found here. Additionally, the minister added that a lot of criminals do not take the consequences of their actions seriously until it's too late. Um, the police would have indicated previously, for instance, that a firearm was recovered from the streets here that was traced to having been bought in the U.S. less than 72 hours before it was recovered on the streets here. And so it's a problem that we're collaborating with the U.S. to address. You would also be aware that there was an American of Bahamian origin that was charged with arms trafficking in the U.S. based on the efforts of that unit and the American agencies. Minister of National Security Wayne Munro is urging residents to think before acting and to remain calm as he says public displays of violence puts innocent people at risk. The Bahamas Department of Correctional Services, BDOCS, is celebrating Corrections Recognition Month and 72 years of an, as an institution. During their annual church service at the Southland Cathedral Global Ministries, Commissioner Don Clare shared what new research has revealed to be one of the major causes behind young men finding themselves going to prison. One of the major factors that is common among all of those persons that comes into our care is drugs. Drugs is the fueling cost. Many persons may think it is unemployment, but it's not unemployment, you know. It is the cost of drugs. And the next thing we find out to is greed. As a result of the ever-growing complexities of a criminal mind and the desire by the government to rehabilitate inmates, Commissioner Clare says the prison is embracing a new approach to dealing with prison inmates. And we have asked the government of the Bahamas to increase our professional staff complement. So now we now need drug counselors. We now need a psychotherapist. We now need a, a good, much more professional staff again. What are we doing? We have a new model. Now we want to address the root cause of why these persons are committing these offenses. BDOCS will stage its family fun day this Saturday, November 23rd, on the prison compound, on the prison compound, that is, the Long Service Award. That will take place on Monday, November 25th, at Government House. And finally, in this segment, the World Chamber of Commerce, WCC, last Thursday recognized the Bahamas Ambassador to the United States, Wendell Jones, with the WCC Global Hero Award. It was presented during the Chamber's Business Regeneration and Wellbeing Conference in Atlanta, Georgia, in recognition of the Ambassador's efforts which strengthen community affairs and for promoting prosperity in our society. This prestigious recognition has been previously presented to dignitaries, 
such as presidents and prime ministers of countries, ambassadors, university presidents, and other important leaders of society. Accepting the award before a large audience at the Georgia Institute of Technology, Ambassador Jones spoke about the principles of regeneration and development while encouraging the organization to promote the climate change agenda of the government of the Bahamas, which he said is vital for sustainability development in the Bahamas. The World Chamber of Commerce invites leaders to work collaboratively and become part of a historical moment to unify countries through common socioeconomic, cultural, and humanitarian goals. You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.